The future of trans rights is in the toilet, at least in one high school in Oregon. Hey, everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott, and this is Right Angle, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Uh, gentlemen, uh, Lake Ridge High School in Oregon has a little situation going on. Uh, in a recent email, they attached a photo of a tampon dispenser that had been ripped off of a wall and put in a toilet in the boys' room in the high school. Um, and the email is uh, explaining that, uh, that uh, they've got to stop this vandalism. It's expensive. It's disrespectful. Uh, and it said, and this is a quote, each time that the dispensers are taken down, the school needs to spend time and resources putting them back up in order to be compliant with House Bill 3294, a.k.a. the Menstrual Dignity Act, which mandates that uh, tampons be made available in the boys' room for reasons of dignity. Um, I'm, you know, this is one of those things. This is kind of like, uh, Bill, I'm going to go with you, I think, on this one. This is, this is a bit like, uh, <laughs> this, this is a bit like calling uh, Florida's law the don't say gay thing. Um, in the fact that, you know, bodily functions are what they are, and there really isn't a whole lot of dignity involved in them. And isn't that why there are doors on the bathrooms to begin with? Yes. And as far as the uh, students who did this, I can assure you that there are probably in excess of 600 FBI agents currently on this case, and they will continue until until the perpetrator is found or perpetrators. First of all, my first reaction upon here, I didn't, hadn't heard the story before. My first reaction was good for you, good for you guys. Whoever Whoever's actually doing that, good for you. You know, there comes a point where where this is really what it comes down to. You know, this is this is just this this line has to be drawn somewhere. And the idea that that just, you know, regular students are just saying, no, no, we're not going to do it. They, they, they've got more guts than and we'll say guts uh, than than the administrators and the politicians and the and, and the teachers and all the rest of it. Um, I Look, I, I don't believe in in generally speaking i don't believe in the destruction of property uh i'm willing to make exceptions if i'm at war with somebody then i don't mind destroy, destroying property and uh and in this case this is an invasion of of this is an invasion it is it 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 it, it lowers the dignity of of the women in the in the um in the school who have this unique problem as females to deal with it's one of the things that makes females females not just biologically but but also morally emotionally and so on and 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 it is part of this destruction not only, many women are saying is about the destruction of women it's also about the destruction of men it's about the destruction of of any kind of traditional basis for anything and constantly putting a tampon dispenser into a boys restroom at a high school is an act of aggression and and it is it's just bat guano crazy steve and and it, i i find it enormously uh relieving that 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 that, that actual people who have to deal with this are just saying no 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 it, no. it needs to be yeah. said. Yeah. Yeah. Too, absolutely too much license has been given to folks who have a, an emotional or, or mental issue. And it's not our job to be completely accommodating in that kind of way. Uh, Scott, Caroline Moore, she's vice president of uh, an organization I just found out about called Parents Defending Education, wrote uh, a few words that uh, I thought really hit the, hit the mark. She said, this isn't about vandalizing school property. We all know that is bad. The boys are signaling that they are not girls and they want to be left alone. It is appalling that any school district is furthering the bizarre agenda for the left where they neglect science and believe men require tampons. Aren't the teachers supposed to be teaching them elementary facts like, I don't know, anatomy? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> that last part well, was from me to you. First of all, uh, I take very seriously any violation of the sanctity of the men's room. 
Um, I don't know what they do in the ladies' room, but I will tell you, it is a hallowed chamber where voices are not heard, where men quietly go about their devotional activities, standing before these carefully carved ceramic sculptures and doing so in utter silence. So anybody just just violating that uh, upsets me. Um, the other thing, I guess I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe there are some uses we didn't think about. For example, if they still make those tampon machines out of uh, metal, if you tear one of those tampon machines off the wall, you may cut yourself. And there's nothing like a tampon to stanch the bleeding of that yes. injury that you sustain while tearing the, that uh, dispenser off the wall. So there's a practical purpose. Um, and I, I'm always trying to get around to, you know, to the other guy's side and figure out what they're thinking. Um, if you're a young man, what better gift for your girlfriend than a bouquet of tampons that you're able to purchase in the privacy of your own men's room? Oh, even better, they're free. Oh, really? There's no really? charge? Yes, oh, no charge well, whatsoever. Gee, you yeah, know, try getting that from the condom machine. I've speak, never thought the concept of, of cringe could exist in the real world as a <laughs> fundamental <laughs> hunk of matter, but apparently it does. Well, I was going to suggest comparing sales figures between the two rooms and then allocating the number of tampons appropriate to each room based on sales figures. Uh, but if they're giving them away for free, then that's a different matter. And I think that that just it creates a whole new opportunity for pranks uh, because there are, there are all kinds of fun things that a young man can do with a tampon. <laughs> I'm, I'm just picturing the carton of milk in the lunchroom that <laughs> that somebody drops one of those into. So, uh, you know, the only thing that I think could turn this around is if they were charging for them, because being a capitalist, I think you should charge for them. I don't think you should subsidize them with government uh, money. If they were charging for them and in the men's room, they should be like cheaper, like 69 cents on a dollar compared to them in the women's room. I think the women's room, they should increase the price there. And just to even it out a little bit, just to make it fair, charge more in the women's room than you do in the men's room. You know, when uh, when these stories first started coming to light a couple, three years ago, it, was, it hadn't reached the high schools yet. It was just the, the universities doing their, uh, their moral virtue signaling by installing tampon dispensers for free uh, in, the, uh, in the men's rooms at uh, various colleges. And all I could think was, and actually I think I wrote this at vodkaputit.com, if they'd been installing tampon dispensers in the men's room when I was at the University of Missouri. There'd have been drunk 19-year-olds all over Hudson dorm with tampons sticking out of our noses and, and ears. And and I think the whole experiment yeah. would have lasted a very short amount of time. In fact, it probably would have lasted about as long as uh, one of the little suburbs outside of St. Louis where I grew up. I think it was Kirkwood. 40, 45 years ago, uh, I had a city ordinance that breathalyzers had to be installed in every bar in town. It's not a huge town, so I don't think there are that many bars. But you drop a quarter in, you get a straw from the bar, you, you, you blow into the machine, and you see what your, your BA count was. And, of course, guys being guys, they turned this into a contest to see who could blow the biggest... BA count on the machine and still function more or less at the bar. And so the ordinance was repealed and the machines were ripped out of the bars and and that was that. And so the simple act of defiance boyish mischief. Yes, I know it's vandalism and I'm against vandalism, but boyish mischief has a has a certain power to it to reveal stupidity. And that's what these I'm going to call them brave young men are doing at this high school in Oregon. And as much as I hate to have, to be forced to this conclusion, I think we need to see more of that. And that is your right angle on that unfortunate subject brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.